Virtual Pinball X has officially made its way over to the Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabinet and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to get it set up. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Okay guys, as I just said, we now have VPX running on the Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabinet. And I do want to mention this is through the cloud, so keep that in mind. But what we're going to do is go over the firmware release from today, which has a couple other features, and then we're going to jump into it. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to get everything set up on your USB drive and on the ALU to get this up and running so you can enjoy some pinball games. So going over to the latest firmware, we are now running version 4.30 and included in that isn't a ton of different things. Obviously the big thing is going to be the pinball feature, but we do actually have a couple new leaderboard games. The first one is Chimera Beast. And then the second one that we actually get access to is Joe and Mac 2. Now the elephant in the room here is going to be this new pinball feature or what is going to be known as the PAOX feature. And essentially, as I said, we are going to be running VPX through their cloud system. Now this is actually really cool because this is going to be a completely free feature. Obviously we're not paying for tables and we aren't going to pay for the feature itself, but at games has also decided they are not going to deduct any of your BYOG hours while you're playing pinball games. So this is completely free. Anyone can use this. You don't have to worry about topping up hours or anything like that. You're going to be able to grab these games and play them straight out of the gate. Now what At Games is going to be doing moving forward is just working with original titles. And by original I mean literally built from the ground level up completely custom tables that most people haven't seen before. So At Games was actually able to secure four licenses. Three tables were actually developed by the same person. His name is Joseph Gofton. So huge shout out to him. Uh, he's got three tables that we're going to include. The first one is going to be called Invader. That's going to have more or less like a Space Invaders type of theme. You're going to be shooting your pinball up, trying to knock off the little X's on the top of the screen and once you knock off enough of them there's actually going to be some of these little alien guys that start marching down the screen in your typical Space Invader style so you just kind of have to pick them off with the uh, with the pinball and it's it's uh, it's quite a bit of fun. His next table is called Skittles and a lot of people are going to say hey is that related to the candy and it's actually not so there is a uh, very popular bowling game in the UK called Skittles, and that's actually what this is going to be based off of. And I guess the purpose of it is to kind of bounce things around, top up your score, hit down the flags at the top of the play field, and what it looks like is gonna happen is once you get far enough into the game, you're gonna unlock kind of the center pin table, and you're gonna be able to knock down those pins that are kind of located in that area. And then moving on to the last table made by Joseph Gofton, is going to be the Texas Poker Table. Now this table, out of all of the three that I've just shown you, is probably the most uh, animated in the sense of colors and, and different things kind of going on and kind of it's the more advanced of those three. And it is a pretty fun table to play, so this is a nice little bonus to kind of have these three in here. Now I do want to mention these three tables specifically, I would consider them more entry level tables. These are going to be truly original homebrew style pinball tables and they definitely show that natural homemade charm. Now the next table we're going to talk about is called the Leprechaun King. This was developed by Orbital Pinball. Now again this is a built from the ground level up table but there's going to be a big difference in what we're looking at in Leprechaun King versus the other three tables. The other three tables are definitely fun but you can tell that they're a lot more entry level in terms of design whereas Orbital Pinball has a much more professional looking and maybe something that you guys might be more familiar with when you think of virtual pinball. So looking at the actual play field and the table, there is a ton going on here. This table on its own could actually have a dedicated video going through rule sets and things like that, and maybe we'll do that in the future. But I did want to show you guys kind of the four table options that we have. And what At Games is going to be doing is as they're able to secure additional tables and, and get things going in that sense, they're going to make them available to us so we can just go ahead and build on this library. Now I'm going to quickly shoot back over to my computer so I can show you guys exactly how to get these games up and running. Alright guys, so here we are on the computer. As you can see, I just have a blank USB drive kind of located on the right hand side of the screen. It's called Store and Go. And then additionally, I have some pre-downloaded files. Now these files were sent to me direct as well as some of the other YouTubers in advance. So I do have them here and I can't really show you where to download them. But At Games is going to be hosting these directly on their website. I'm going to leave direct links 
down below. So you guys just have to go there, click, and grab the games. And what you're going to do is you're going to be able to grab the games exactly like you see it here. It'll be pre-built in a PUCE format. So you just download them and you're pretty much good to go at that point. Additionally, it's important to mention we are going to be needing a new and updated version of the add-on X tool. I've got mine here. And just to show you guys, you're going to be needing to run at least the version 1.0.18. Now mine says beta because I do have a beta build, but your version is going to be either 1.0.18 or greater. So make sure that's the version you have. Now you likely won't have this version because this is going to be new. I'm going to leave links again down below where you can go ahead and grab it and update to the latest version. Now we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, as I said, once you grab your pinball tables in their new format PUCE, we just literally have to take them and dump them directly on the USB drive. Now they aren't huge in terms of their size, so it shouldn't take very long just to transfer them on. So now that they've transferred on, we are good. I do want to mention that these games must go on the root of the USB drive. Additionally, if you have a build with a ton of other UCE files in it, it's totally fine. You can throw it all on there and you can dump them all on the root of the USB drive. It's not a big deal, but it is important to note 100% these games, these PUCE files need to be on the root of the USB drive. The next step, of course, is going to be grabbing our add-on X tool. We're going to double click on that. We have to then choose our USB drive. I've got it right over here. We hit OK, and we're going to go ahead and start building. Now, I only have four files on my USB drive, so it's not going to take very long, probably about 15 or 20 seconds. Obviously, the more things you have, the longer it's going to take. Perfect. So that took about 25 seconds or so. Now, one of the big questions I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask is, hey, can I bring my own PUCEs or can I bring my own VPX tables to the platform? And the answer to that is no. At Games is not going to be supporting just random uh, tables that people want to bring in. That being said, they are looking to work with original table creators. So if you or you know someone who has built an original VPX table, I'm going to leave an email in the description down below. You can reach out to At Games and maybe they can set something up in the sense of getting those games integrated with their platform. But the scan's done. Games are loaded up on the USB drive. We're more or less done in terms of what we have to do over here on the computer. Next, we're going to jump over to the Legends Ultimate because there is a couple other steps that we have to do to get this thing ready. Okay, so here we are on the Legends Ultimate. Before we can actually get these games to run, we actually have to upload them and transfer them up to the cloud server. So we need to go over to our BYOG section and we should have an icon that now displays as MGR, My Gamer. And we are gonna go ahead and select that tile. And when we do select that tile, we're gonna have one additional tile in here called Scotty. And when we click on that, that's actually gonna give us a couple of different options. So the first one is going to say upload. The second one is going to say reset. Upload is obviously going to be taking the files off of our USB drive and kicking them up to the cloud so they are playable. Reset is going to allow us to wipe the files that we've transferred up. So if you put a bunch of things up, you're not happy with them, hitting the reset button is going to clear that and then you can re-upload the files that you want at that point. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit the upload button and uh, this process does take a little bit of time, I'd say one or two minutes for it to transfer these four files up. So you'll just have to be patient and when it's done, it'll just indicate that it's at 100%. All right, now we've got our files completely transferred up to the cloud, everything's good to go. All that's left for us to do is to go back to the BYOG menu. We're going to go down and we're going to select the new PAOX or P add on X feature. And when we do that, we're going to select our drive from the left hand menu. And you're going to see all of your pinball tables there. The artwork's going to be there. The games are ready to go. All you've got to do is select one and press the A button to jump into it. Now there is going to be a few things that I mentioned here. We are on a cloud system. So the elephant in the room here is going to be latency and potential lag. And I'd be lying if I told you, you were not going to experience it. You absolutely will experience some latency and some lag. That being said, from the uh, testing that I've done, it's actually been pretty stable and the latency has been quite stable. So you actually get a fairly decent playable experience. One of the tips that I would actually recommend, if you are experiencing some unideal latency or anything like that, just press the menu button on the control deck and we've got some options in terms of adjusting the quality levels. So right now it's going to be by default set to automatic. So that'll bump you up and down depending on bandwidth and signal strength and communication to the server. If you are one of those people that are having some trouble, 
you are definitely going to want to set this to the lowest setting. Now, people are going to be a little bit concerned, but in terms of what you see on screen, there is almost no difference in terms of visible screen resolution that you can actually see by going from automatic down to the lowest. Additionally, on the far right hand side, if you do want to keep an eye on what the FPS is or what the current latency is, you can actually go ahead and enable that feature and it'll display in the top right hand corner. Now, I do got to say this specific table is an absolute beauty. I love this table. It's a ton of fun and it's pretty complicated. It's not just as simple as keeping the ball in play. There are stages, there are upgrades. There's a whole different aspect to this game than just keeping that ball in play. So definitely this is something that I think a lot of people are going to want to spend their time on. All the other games as well, they've all kind of got their little quirks and uniqueness to them. So definitely take some time and play through each of the games and uh, have some fun while you're doing it. In terms of controls, it's actually really nicely laid out. The A button on the first player control controls the left hand side flippers and the C button on the player two controls controls the right hand side flippers in order to enter a coin or press start is actually the player one start button. And in order to launch a ball is the B button on either first or second player controls. And that's pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this new feature. I know that there's going to be some people saying you can't stream pinball, and I don't know that that's entirely true. I understand the argument that obviously playing pinball natively is going to be the best in every case, and I think playing any game natively is best in any situation. And that being said, the ad game servers are pretty darn good, and, uh, and I can just tell you out of personal experience that I really am enjoying these tables. But that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys again real soon.